Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to have you folks here. We are back in ordinary time in the Christian calendar, and blessed is the ordinary. I think we can use some ordinary about now. And so we're going to continue with our Matthew lectionary, and we'll have, unfortunately, um, four weeks of difficult readings ahead of us. Yay! But anyway, glad to have you folks here back at worship. Today, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, and today what we'll be doing is you'll be picking up the piece of bread and the little glass and then proceeding to the pouring chalice. I will be saying the words of distribution at the beginning for everyone. This is an attempt for us really to speed things up because last week, communion went a little bit slower than what we anticipated, so we're trying different venues while we have to follow COVID rules as well. So. You've been rock stars and patience with us as we've been trying things out. And so I appreciate that very, very much. And again, today we'll be trying new things out, including me doing the PowerPoint. And so if there are PowerPoint issues, it's me. All me today. Hopefully there won't be any. You might notice also I am not wearing a mask. Uh, we found out last week that through the online broadcast when the masks were worn, it was muffled online. And so when Natalie reads, she won't be masking, and when Terry and Tom are singing, they won't be masking either. And we'll trust that social distance or physical distance and the windows open will take care of that issue as well. So I just wanted to explain that. We appreciate you wearing masks. Our insurance company recommends it, encourages it, and strongly advises it. So do we. And so we thank you for that act of ministry. Consider it an act of love, and it's appreciated. I think that's it for announcements now. We'll have more announcements at the end of worship. We'll get ready with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Maybe. There we go. Blessed be the Holy... Whoops. Okay. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. Sure. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And your spirit, lead us. So may By the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We'll continue with the song, which will be sung for
Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us so true. Sorry about this. You know what, if I could have a volunteer at the computer just pressing enter, that would be great with each new slide. So I'll go backwards. Guide us so by your spirit that we proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the readings. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Christ. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw that the flute players in the crowd making commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke. And the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of the demons, he casts out the demons. Then Jesus went about all their cities and villages, teaching their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority to, over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. Enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the who's the kingdom of heaven has come near. Hear the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Authority. Did you ever think that you had it? 
When I think of this lesson, I think really to my maternal grandmother, Jeanette. She was what we'd call a powerful, powerful person. She reminded me a lot, actually, of Mother Superior on The Flying Nun. Ever just watched that show as a kid? It's an old, old TV program in the 1960s, and it starred Sally Field when she was very, 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 very young. I watched the program as reruns as a kid, so you know how old the program really is. But the premise is that Sally Field was a nun serving in Puerto Rico, and her small petite size, along with her habit and the strange hat she wore with the habit, somehow worked with the breezes of Puerto Rico. It would lift her from time to time, and she could fly over the island and get into all kinds of mischief. One time, she was introducing the other characters on the show, and she said, well, that's Mother Superior. And she said, the wind never flies in her office or blows in her office because she wouldn't allow it. And I nearly spit out my Cheerios because right away, I thought of my grandmother. And we sort of nicknamed her Mother Superior just because she was that sort of powerful, powerful woman. Her parents were from the Netherlands, and so like a lot of Dutch people, she was tall. And she was um, very, very, how should I say, sort of regal bearing in her carriage. She just kind of walked always with a purpose and always spoke with a purpose. And she was both fluent in Dutch and English. And the English she had, she picked up from her parents who had learned it in the Netherlands. And so they had learned it with a British accent and old language. So grandma would say, doesn't a lot. You doesn't do that. I doesn't do this. And we thought, well, who in the world says doesn't besides grandma? And when she said doesn't, we knew that trouble was afoot. She wasn't overly demonstrative either with hugs or kisses. In fact, I don't recall any. But we could sense that she loved us fiercely and God help anyone who would ever cause harm to us. We just had that sense that grandma had our back. Grandma also went to college, which was rare for women back then. And after college, she taught for a while until her parents sent her to the thriving metropolis of Baldwin, Wisconsin, so that she could marry a Dutch man. Their fear was that she would marry a dumb Swede. Well, Baldwin wasn't too kind to their plans. Nothing happened, and she returned to teaching until she was in her 30s, and then she met a dumb Swede. <laughs> And she and Ted married and had 50-some years together before she passed. She was, for most of her life, a teacher. And she also had a child very late in life, so she should have known better. She really, really should have known better. But we had this ritual at her house when we slept over. She'd read to us as a bedtime story the Ode of Orphan Annie. If you don't know that, it's a horrible, horrible poem about little children who have horrible outcomes for misbehaving. And there's a refrain that goes, the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. For the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. And the, the light chain would be pulled and we'd be left in the utter darkness of the farmhouse in the dark thinking, okay, the goblins will get us if we don't watch out. I felt like I had no authority whatsoever over her or over the darkness. Now, you might be sick of me mentioning these times. I'm sick of mentioning these times. But we are in these times. But it's come to me to realize, too, there have also been other dark times like 2020. In fact, much darker times than this. There's another Dutch lady, her name was Eddie Hillesum, and she was a Jew, and in 1941, after she was captured by the Nazis, she had a profound faith experience. Before being captured, she never called herself a religious person whatsoever. But in captivity, she became very, very close to God, and she penned this on her way to the gas chambers. She said, there must be someone to live through it all and bear witness to the fact that God lived, even in these times, 
and why should I not be that witness? In other words, why not me? See, the reality is we are called, unfortunately, to go out. And I say unfortunately because I don't know about you, but I don't always want to go out. It's one thing to be a disciple, but now we've been transferred into the reign of apostleship. Disciples are students or followers of Jesus, and apostles are the ones sent out to proclaim the love of Jesus. And by whose authority? His authority. And so the reality is that each and every one of us in this room, each and every one of us watching online, has been given the authority to go out into the dark world and proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near. We're called to raise the dead, heal the sick, to set free the captive. The whole list goes on and on and on, and to me, that makes me afraid. Because I think about that and I think, really? I can't do that. I can't raise the dead. I can't heal the sick. I can't even clip a fingernail correctly. How can I do what Jesus asks? And that's the catch. It's not about me. It's not the I, 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 or the me, 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 me. But it's Jesus in us doing those things. When someone gives us authority, we automatically become apprentices. And the work of the apprentice always reflects the work of the master. And so our words and our acts of love, our kindness, our learning, everything about us is to reflect that Jesus is in us. And that wherever we go, people realize that the kingdom of heaven has come near. But again, we can't rely on ourselves for doing that. If we put ourselves in the equation, we're going to fail. If we make it all about Jesus, then we can let Jesus shine and the work is done. But one more thing. I think the reality is he also sends us into the scariest of mission fields. And that's here at home. Notice what he says to the apostles originally. Go to your own people. Sure, later in the Gospel of Matthew, he'll say, go to all nations. But he first says to the apostles, go to your friends, go to your family, go to your neighbors, go to your culture, go to the people just like you and let them know that the kingdom of God has come near. And in doing so, with your words and your actions, the ill will be healed, the blind will see, the mute will speak, the dead souls will rise again because Jesus gives the authority and the commission for all of us to go out and do that. Not to be afraid because he's with us. We're not little children in a dark bedroom in an old Wisconsin farmhouse looking up and saying, the goblins will get us if we don't watch out. There is a greater authority even than that of Jeanette's. It's Jesus' authority who has our back now and forever and says, hey, child, go out. There's a lot of sheep out there who are lost. and We know that's the case, do we not? We see it each and every day. Well, the good news is the kingdom of God has come near to us and through us, the kingdom of God will come near to them. And Jesus tells us to go. So we'll go. And we'll go with Jesus' authority and with his love. We won't know what will happen. But what will happen will be good. Whether we see it now or in glory, it will be good. With that, what else can we say but to God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue now with our next hymn sung for us. If you want to follow the words in the hymnal, that's okay. It's Here I Am, Lord. Kathy, what's the number? 574.
We'll continue with the prayers. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. When there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. When there is flooding, bring abatement. When there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Be among all our citizens as we strive to understand one another. Let healing and reconciliation abound here and across the land. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who are hungry. Empower all whose voices go unheard, and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. We lift before you Andy Peterson, and those whom we name aloud were in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We'll continue now with our offering. And if you have offering here, you can certainly get up if you would like and go to the drop box or to the giving kiosk. If you are at home, certainly take time to look at our Give app, our Give Plus app, or write a check and send it in the mail, or look at automated giving. We'll continue now with some offering music. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, those are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup's new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Instead of each person receiving the words of distribution, I'll give it to us all now, and then come forward um, and receive the bread and the wine. Again, you can pick up the bread off the plates and the little glass and proceed to the pouring chalice. If you desire juice, there are some filled glasses of juice as well. And if you are giving communion at home, we need to distribute the bread. It is the body of Christ broken for you. And if you are distributing the wine, it's the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive the words of distribution. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to the table. All are welcome. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, Miss Emil, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. First of all, um, I'm going to call forward Lanny Erickson and not only is he a very, very gifted bassist and member of um, By Faith, he is also the chair of the call committee, and he's also the bearer of all that goes wrong here. We have a saying on Wednesday evenings, if something goes wrong, it's Lanny's fault. 
And so he was also the chair of the call committee, and you called me, so it's Lanny's fault. <laughs> and so I don't know what no good he's up to right now, but he has to come forward. So Lanny? First, John had me go on to the transition team, and then he had me on the call committee. Well, I think it was the very next day after he told me I was on a call committee, I decided, I already knew he was going to be pastor, I just knew it for whatever reason. So I was, I'm being very kind, decided to get him a nice, really get, good gift that he's just going to love. <laughs> <laughs> We all know he loves the Vikings, right? <laughs> so, oh, I got no. a Vikings jersey, and it says, Pass it down on the back. <laughs> and I got him this, the white one, because it's a visitor jersey. I knew he would never be a uh, Vikings homie, so that's why I got him the white one. So, so well, thank you. There you go. He told me not to give it to him, but I'm going to do it yeah. anyway. Thank you very much. I am married to a Viking homie, so I'm sure she appreciates it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I might wear it sometime. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Lanny. This really is your fault. Okay. Next Sunday, we'll pray for really, really good weather, no rain, and coolish temperatures because we're hoping to have a parking lot service here. And the parking lot service would mean that we'd have every other stall filled with folks from this congregation worshiping in their cars. Ron and the Erickson boys and I will be working on the sound, so you should be able to hear fine in your cars. And we'll even have the um, Holy Sacrament in the cars as well. The good news about doing worship that way is we'll be free from the masks. People can sing, and it'll be more of a... It'll be different, it'll be in cars, but it'll be more of a normal Sunday experience outside in cars. How's that sound? But anyway, so we're praying, hopefully, that it's not a pouring storm or the heat indices aren't through the roof. If they are, then we'll resort to plan B and be back inside. But anyway, our plan is for next week to be outside. Please keep in your prayers a few families in our congregation. Uh, first and foremost, um, Andy Peterson, son of Dave and Artie, and he had heart surgery on Friday, and um, it was an extensive surgery, and he's still recovering and could really use our prayers that this does not happen again. And then also, many of you know that Marlene Hansen's funeral was this past Wednesday. Please keep that family in your prayers. Yesterday, we had a joyous occasion. We had our first COVID wedding here. And Crystal Shire married Brian Chudy, and they're sometimes here on Wednesday evenings. They'll be joining our congregation. It was a happy, happy, wonderful ceremony, and so there was some good news. Uh, prayer ministry, Kay, are you open for prayer today in the Sunday school room? Are you open to have prayer ministry in the Sunday school room? If anyone needs prayer, you can meet Kay in one of the Sunday school rooms after worship as well. I think I've been doing a pretty good job of probably inundating your inboxes with all my emails, um, but it's a good way to spread the news. When you see announcements like this, of course, in these COVID times, it's all tentative. And so those are our desires, those are our plans, but make sure you call ahead to see if things are still happening as well. Anyone else have announcements for the good of the community? Nice. It's okay. Roberts Library opening on the 15th. Masks are preferred there. Thank you, Jen. Okay, well, please receive the benediction. Lord bless you, and or, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Blessed Assurance. <laughs>